Hi everybody, this is Heather Coleman, yoga and Reiki practitioner and telepathic medium. Today we are going to be doing a yoga meditation practice that is designed primarily to help you open and balance your third eye chakra right here. Um, our third eye helps us to more clearly see ourselves, our circumstances, helps us with creative problem solving, especially when we're feeling stuck or at a crossroads. So if that's you at this point, this is an especially great yoga meditation practice for you. Today, we're going to be working with two mudras. Our very first mudra is called Unity. It's going to look just like this. I'm going to tuck our little fingers under our thumbs, rest our hands in our lap, and notice that I'm in lotus position here. Now, lotus, I like to describe it as crisscross applesauce in a way that's comfortable for you. So we're beginning in a comfortable lotus with our unity mudra, and our two focus words are unity and clarity. Unity and clarity. Unity and clarity. Now as you hold your mudra, switch the cross of your legs, chances are it's going to be just a little bit uncomfortable. Just a little bit. And we're still focusing on unity and clarity. Unity and clarity. Unity and clarity. Now flowing into our inner witness mudra. Inner witness mudra. We're touching all four of our fingers. Now we're turning our thumbs, bending our thumbs at the knuckles. So from your view, it looks something like that. Our mantra is, my inner, lit my inner witness leads me to perfect equanimity. My inner witness leads me to perfect equanimity. My inner witness leads me to perfect equanimity. And if you're wondering what that means, it is calling on the part of ourselves, and we all have a part of ourselves, that it is a witness to what goes on, more of a detached observer that we all have within ourselves, helping us to look at our circumstances more objectively. So calling on that inner witness leading us to equanimity. Equanimity is an ideal balance of emotions, thoughts, decision-making, and also a balance within the systems of our body. So we'll say that mantra just one more time. My inner witness leads me to perfect equanimity. Beautiful. And we've got two additional poses for today. Number one is our lotus. We're going to get into our child's pose next, and we're going to do two variations of child's pose. So we're going to swing our legs around to the side, and then from there we've got our feet together. Bring your knees as wide as you need to be comfortable. And to begin, we're actually going to go ahead to our unity and clarity mudra with our little finger to thumb and come into what's often called traditional child's pose, meaning our arms and hands go behind us with our palms up. Come as low as you're comfortable. Maybe you can bring your forehead all the way to the ground. Maybe you can't. Do what's comfortable for you. Settle into your pose. Hold your mudra. Looks like that. <laughs> You've got your palms up. We're breathing up and down the spine. For three, two, one. Roll yourself up just enough that you can inch your hands upward to extend a child's pose. This time your palms are down, but you've still got your mudra. Forehead into the mat. Let your whole body melt into your mat. Specifically allow your forehead to just sink and relax into the floor. That's the aspect of this that helps open that third eye the most, but just know that this pose helps to open that third eye because of the alignment of the entire body. For example, the hip opening, 
the extension of the arms and shoulders and chest, all of that assists. We are here for eight more seconds, a big inhale and exhale, three, two, and one. Let's slowly rise. And then from here, we're going to have an option, meaning you can opt in or out. And the reason I say that right off the bat is that dolphin pose is pretty challenging. If you're a complete beginner, you may want to take the option of staying in either one of the versions of child's pose that we've done, and or you may want to take this on your knees. So three options for dolphin pose. One, skip it entirely and do child's pose. Two, here's option two, is to simply lift up your hips, bringing your knees a little bit closer together, maybe shoulder width, and just press your weight into your forearms. Now we're going to take that inner witness mudra. You don't have to lift your hands, I'm just doing that so you can see. We're going to make sort of like a little house and tuck the thumbs, remember how that went, and set that mudra on the ground. So the idea is here that if you think of down dog, if you've done down dog, you're going to lift your hips high and back. Now if you're feeling pretty good with this, you can walk your hands out a little further and press with your ab muscles to lift your hips and glutes and your chin is tucked. So remember option one was just to take a child's pose and you're still doing the work. Option two is on your knees. Do your best to keep the mudra. If you lose the mudra as we go further, no worries, it's okay. Now option three is those of you that have done down dog, this is a lot like down dog, where we're going to slowly lift up our hips you can keep those knees bent, or maybe you're able to come to straight knees. Again, this is completely up to you. It's an intense pose, and that's where also maybe you're keeping that mudra, but if not, it really, it is okay. We're only going to stay here for five, four, three, two, and one. Now let's slowly lower down to an oblique child's pose. So we're going to walk our hands over to the left, enough to feel a pleasant stretch through your right side. And then bring it up, walk your hands over to the right, enough to feel a stretch in your left side. Wonderful. From there, let's walk those hands back up, coming into a hero pose to seal off our practice. So flowing through those two mudras, inner witness, thumbs tucked, little house shape, clarity and unity. Little fingers tucked under thumbs and a lap. From there, use your hands to help. If you need to, swing your legs around to the front. This mudra up until now we were doing separately. Connect your mudra by bringing your thumbs and your fingers to touch. From the clear seeing in me to the clear seeing in you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, click the bell so you'll get notifications. I upload new videos every week. Uh, also tarot and oracle card readings, educational videos. Subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video. And check out the entire series of yoga meditations. I've got all seven chakras um, broken down, all five elements. You can use them as a sequence. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Going back into that mudra here. And namaste.